what we've seen with TV is that it's always just worked well enough. And so that's what everyone has relied on. When we start getting all of the very specific data coming out of video online, um, there's a lot of opportunity there, but I think it's a lot of inertia from people actually having grown up in the TV world. Um, where we're headed with, with online video is going to be so much exponentially greater uh, data amounts. Um, and that's generated not just by the video itself, but the surrounding context, whether that's individual, whether it's location, et cetera, et cetera, that my fear is actually that in the coming years, there's going to be reticence to take advantage of that data simply because there's too much and it's too difficult. There's two things to consider. There are sort of standard models of trajectory where you're thinking about innovation and adoption, and then there's things that are unique to the video world. I think in this case, what I kind of lean toward is actually the, those general models. And one of my favorites is the lazy user uh, selection model. Very simple. And basically what it says is, if there are impediments, people aren't going to use anything. And so I think as, as robust and as intelligent as these solutions are, it's just a matter of um, using them regularly and, and as an industry until they reach a point of utility that's unavoidable, but also usability that is extraordinarily simple. So I think it's a couple things. Uh, there are creative challenges, there are distribution challenges, there's engagement challenges. Um, difficult to sort of address those all at once. Uh, so I'm a big believer in looking at them independently, looking at some of the forces that are driving those. And then in terms of getting just familiar and comfortable with these new tools and these new avenues, it's just a matter of um, just playing with them. Um, and I think that's what I see most often is that people are scared to just test and engage without necessarily running a big campaign or spending a lot of money. Um, what are the ways that you can get real um, practical familiarity? And I think that's just a matter of people not having enough time in the day. But if I were to prescribe a solution, that's probably where I would start. So it's hard to see a silver bullet for all of the ailments regarding measurement and video and TV and crossover. Um, I have what's probably a radical point of view on that, which is that Internet of Things and augmented reality are actually going to be a little bit of a um, combo to provide some additional context to the way in which uh, people view different types of media. And that once we start to address the fundamentals of creating content and creating experiences for both IoT and AR, there's actually going to be some um, just after effects from having done that that will improve the overall video advertising landscape. The reason I'm really bullish on AR and IoT is that I think it's going to happen no matter what. So as an inevitability, in order for us to get there, there have to be certain things that link IoT and awareness about the world to AR, which is a personalized view of the world. Once we get to that level of personalization, which is going to be demanded by AR, we are by default going to have data and measurement that come out of that that will influence everything from shopper marketing all the way into what's happening with video advertising. I know it's a, a very grand idea, but I think in order for there to be a silver bullet, it's got to be that level of uh, innovation. You know, we've had an ability to send and distribute video for a long time. Uh, of course, as speeds get faster, we're getting much better at doing that. What's exciting about Google and their new platform is that they're taking this very rich, very heavy interactive content. This is These are video games. So if you think about all of the, um, the lag problems associated with the video game, of the high resolution of the gaming images, they are tackling some of the fundamental problems of interactive video games, but those are interactive content. So as we look for new ways to measure or to insert different interactive elements, there's a lot of what they're doing that seems like it's a video game, but I think is actually applicable to the wider industry.